Hi, welcome to Beyond Politics. I'm Catherine Clark. Nova Scotia Conservative MP Greg Kerr was born at Annapolis Royal to a family that was very dedicated to community service. He took that message to heart and not only volunteered in his community, but served at the municipal, provincial, and federal levels. Greg Kerr joins me now to talk about life beyond politics. Greg Herr, welcome to Beyond Politics. It's really great to have you here. Thank you for having me. You have had, um, you've had a long and interesting career in politics at, mm -hmm. a, at various levels. And um, as a kid, is that what you knew you wanted to do? I, I guess grew up in a family that was usually engaged in something going on in the community. And um, it was getting things done, I guess. It sort of was ingrained. Didn't realize at the time, but uh, a lot of friends encouraged me to uh, get involved. I was going to uh, talk about things or push things along that perhaps where the decision making takes place that's the place to be and it wasn't planned young but when it started happening it really sort of came Took together. Off. Yeah, very <laughs> quickly. Were you the kind of kid who was used to, um, were you a consensus builder kid? Were you a competitive kid? What type of well, child? Were well I was both I guess were but um, what, what I found I still say today I know we spent uh, a lot of time it seems talking about things we can't do much about right but the issues we can do something about a lot of people often don't like to dig down in them and uh, that's something that always has struck me that listen if we can fix something let's do something about it or if we can change something uh, whether we agree or disagree if we can reach a consensus it's a good right. idea instead of just talking about things that we can't do anything about do you ever find being in Ottawa now that um, that's something that happens a lot that people do spend a lot of time talking about things they can't do much about instead of getting down to constructive work? Um, I'm sure there are a lot of different views as to, as to what's accomplished, but what I found uh, the provincial uh, involvement was uh, in, in that sense more productive because you were more limited in both scope and perhaps responsibilities. Right. Federal uh, consensus building is a constant ongoing thing because of geography, because of culture, right. because of differences. So. That's uh, interesting. There's a lot of debate goes on. Sure. I don't think any of it's ever a waste of time, but I do find as politicians we all tend to uh, kind of drag things out more than we have to sometimes. Yeah. Um, did you ever uh, talk, well, we should probably talk a little bit about your family too and mm -hmm. what, your, what your mom and dad were like and the kind of influence they had on your life too as the mm -hmm. person you've become now. Well, um, as I say, they're very much community involved. Um, we ended up in the area we're in. Dad was... Uh, a surgeon in the war who was actually in the battle, really? battle, battle of the Atlantic and got stationed to Cornwallis Navy Base yes. uh, at the end of the war. So that's how we ended up in the Annapolis Valley. Um, I just remember always as kids we were involved in some community activities. Volunteerism was an obligation. Not okay, a right, not so you were voluntold. Yes. You were voluntold to <laughs> yeah. be at the event. You sort of assumed that was what your job was, I guess. Right. But, but no, um, we, uh, we were always pretty active. We were. And, and in small communities that tends to happen a lot, yeah. or, or at least at that time did, yeah. So was your dad, did your dad continue to be a surgeon? Yes. Or a oh, yeah. he did. In uh, Annapolis Royal. Yes. Uh, he uh, operated at the local hospital for right. a long time. And All kinds of things? Like, was he a general surgeon? Yeah. Or was, oh, yeah. Right. And uh, that became more restricted, I guess, as time went on when they more and more specialized, and you'd find that a lot of uh, a lot of procedures didn't take place at local hospitals anymore, and it's very specialized today. Of course, you have to go to yes. a specific center, but no, very involved, and, and mom was just a great mom. She was a stay-at-home mom? She was, yeah. and very, again, very, very active in the community. But right. uh, Was she uh, a firm person, or was she the more kind of lenient, loving person? Who uh, we certainly had a lot of love in the family, but, uh, but you knew where you stood. Okay. Uh, again, it's th this idea of not beating around the bush too long right. because there's so many important things to do. I guess, so. <laughs> uh, no, they were they were very kind. We weren't uh, overly disciplined, but we were reminded of our obligation. Matter right. of fact, one of the things I've, I've uh, passed along to our two daughters is I said you get one real freedom. It's freedom of choice. But once you make it, you're stuck with it. In other words, you are obligated, and that's sort of what we grew up with. It's, it's a great message. Yeah. Well. It's at the end of the day, we are always responsible for ourselves. I, you know, and I yeah. think that's 
it, it helps when you know your own limits, I guess. Did your family <coughs> have um, uh, a, a sense of standing in the community because of your dad's job? He would have been sought out by people for um, issues that they might be experiencing or... Um, um, Yes, partly I suppose. Well, he was mayor for a while of the town, and uh, was he really? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, as I said, he was mayor and a surgeon. That's yeah. a big load. Yeah, and that's why he would push things along in an agenda quickly, wise, fairly quickly. Uh, there's lots of chance to talk, but once you've gone through it at least once or twice, it's time to make a decision. Sort of the way he looked at it. We were, as I said, we were so all um, it seemed always involved in the community activities. So. It kind of came natural that that uh, people expect you to be involved in things, I guess. So yeah, just worked that way. Um, brothers and sisters, did you? Have yes, uh, two sisters and a brother. Um, the my older sister is actually living in Ontario, and the other, uh, my bro younger brother and my younger sister, are living uh, fairly close to Annapolis Royal. Okay. In Annapolis Royal now. Uh, they are in Annapolis. Can they vote for you? Because that would Could be they? very helpful. They, yes. Are they in your riding? Oh, yes. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I excellent. hope so. I don't know what they do. But I, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming I, they do. <laughs> I'm hoping they do. Yeah. It's always good to have as much family <clears throat> as you can get yeah. into a certain yeah, region. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, when you were a kid then, we talked a little bit whether politics was what mm. you wanted to be, and you said you were a consensus builder. And would, Did you have an idea of a job in particular that was going to be yours, or was education promoted as part of your uh, family culture? Did your dad want you to be a doctor? No, I was never never encouraged to, to follow the, the family tradition, although um, there were other medical people in the family. But um, I, at, for some strange reason, when I was younger, I, th I was actually thinking of law. Oh, good. And Interesting. Thinking, yeah. I was thinking law because, uh, you know, that's kind of when you help people in situations, etc. And right. as I got to university age, I realized that law is a, it can be a very different profession, depending which way you go. And right. I, Ended up uh, actually uh, ended up teaching in high school for a while. Did you? Um, huh? Whereabouts? Locally? Yeah, the next town up, Richtown. Okay. Yeah, and uh, taught for nine years, then got into provincial politics. Nine years is a long time to teach. What did you teach? Um, economics, law, and history. Okay. Enjoyed it. The, the kids may have thought I was there long enough. I don't know, but we, <laughs> we did well. Kids normally do. You know, the other the other thing about that, again, involvement, is some of the best memories were actually coaching the students. Oh, in and sports. The, yes, and, yeah. that, and, and that's where, and I still say it today with, in education, that's where you really learn so much about the young people is outside of the classroom setting. And uh, I always look back fondly, remember those times very much. What did you coach? I did uh, hockey for a while. Yes. And soccer. Right. And helped out with basketball some. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you uh, did you ever teach any of your own kids? No, you didn't. They were in a different school. Okay, yeah. that's probably good for both of you. I'm sure they <laughs> think that way. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, tell me about how you met your wife, because I understand you were both were you in high school. Not only in high school, believe it or not, we were born about the same time in the same hospital. Oh wow! Didn't run into each other until about junior high. Yes. Uh, we're both a little competitive, student council that sort of thing, and then uh, high school. It, it became obvious that we were quite attracted to each other and still are, I guess, or at least I am. I she is too. <laughs> she's still with I, you, then. Yeah, I think that's is. a solid and, bet. And she's been, she's been great in this public thing. And, it, and just on that, the, the difficulty, and I'm sure you know that, uh, young children, politics, yeah. it's trying to make timetables and agendas work. And provincially, was the, they're both growing up the time I decided to try federal. but. It's uh, it's a real balancing act, trying to make sure you spend enough time with them, and and uh, whenever we're off, we spend a lot of time with them. But there are things you miss. You know, yes. That, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> do you re do you regret some of the things that you missed, or is it something that like have you ever talked to them about it? Because they might have a different take on it. It's 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 really something. We we talked uh, mentioned before we started about trailering and camping. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that we uh, uh, did that at a for them a young age because we had to get out of the area because you never get away from the politics you know, 100% in your yeah. own area. So when we did, they loved it. And interesting, a few years ago, they both wanted to do a reunion trip. Their friends thought they were nuts. You want to go with your parents camping, but we did. The real difference is uh, we, when we went when we were young, it was a wife and two nice little daughters. It was three women and myself <laughs> the last trip. But, and how did but that they, go? Oh, it was excellent because they talked about what you did, that they, you know, that no regrets. And yeah. 
and they knew what we spent, what time we could, and uh, it worked out well. Yeah, I, I think <clears throat> political parents are often much harder on themselves than their kids are. For the kids, they're, I mean, it's just a way of life, right? But and you feel a little guilty. I can time. understand that. Yeah. I, I absolutely you miss, understand that. You miss that. A, a, you know, a concert or an event or sure. something like that. Yeah. When you first got into politics, did mm -hmm. you have any sense of what kind of time commitment was involved? Not really. Um, I remember, and I was quite young when I uh, first got involved, and I remember thinking after the election, I had no idea what we were paid, I had no idea what was expected of you. Oh, you mean as an elected official? Yeah. You didn't know any of those things? I didn't bother uh, to checking find out. that. I assume, you know, you're going to get a paycheck, and of course, we're quite well paid as it turns out. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't think about that. I really thought about um, getting where decisions were being made. Uh, right. That seemed to be the, the, the repeating motivation that I ran into. Was it because you were frustrated with stuff that was going on in the school? There, not the school. Um, what we often find, it's still there today, is uh, when you're outside of a, a larger urban area, uh, the more rural you are, sometimes it's more difficult to get certain things uh, accomplished. And it's a, it's, a, it's a numbers game or it's a population game or so on. But we had some things that we felt, uh, you know, in a very historic area that we wanted to push along in both heritage. We, matter of fact, we've got uh, Fort Anne, the first uh, historic national park was started, and it'll be have its 100th in 2017. Mm. So a lot of things related to heritage, as an example, and it seemed it had to be somewhere else that was going to take place. So that was part of it. The other was, um, I, I think, just the recognition that uh, you had to speak just a little louder if you're farther away, like you're a little more singular voice than you would say, a, you know, a, a Toronto MP, and I don't mean this in any yeah. way at all, except that the, the 10 of you may have the same issue on the same day, whereas if you're a rural member, you, you probably have it all by yourself in many cases. So right. That was a bit of the same provincially, if you're a rural person, you had to push a little harder, so somewhere in there, they said, go push. And go I, push? Yeah. That's what I ended up doing. When uh, <coughs> you would have had this stable job as a teacher, yes. I would have assumed you would have been paying into some kind of a pension. pension yeah. uh, did anyone tell you, don't do this, this is silly, including your wife? Well, actually, uh, it took a while for her. If she hadn't agreed, I wouldn't have, right. by the way. But after a while, she said, no, I think, I think it's, I don't know if she understood how, how it could interfere, because you're thinking elected, you weren't thinking cabinet at that time, you weren't yeah. thinking of all the time commitment. But, uh, yeah, I had a few people said, well, you're crazy, because uh, we didn't stay long enough to actually uh, lock the pension in, and, and oh. so on, so that there was that, that point was raised, and, I said, and you're young enough, well, uh, that's nice, yeah, it doesn't right. matter. But I think the, um, the, the main focus still was being involved somewhere where decisions are made and trying to, trying to make a difference. And I think most people run in politics hope they're going to make a difference. I agree with you. I think that motivation is there. Yeah. Uh, you did make it to cabinet. Yes. And uh, in, I mean, a fairly senior position. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, what did you enjoy the most about it? Well, first, I, I, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, <laughs> there, were, there were some days that were uh, more difficult than others, like any public jobs can be. I, I think the fact that um, uh, got to meet so many people both in the province and at the federal level and other parts of the country. It was a part of a learning experience which helped balance your decisions. You know, sometimes when you're a bit parochial you say, well, that, that's got to be done that way and you find out there are other communities that think just the opposite. So right. that was part of the learning curve is understanding that balance, which by the way, often the public gets very impatient with because right. they don't see that same thing. And it's still there today. I still see that well, why don't they fix this? Why don't they do that? And there's uh, usually good reason for things being usually uh, for things being done or not being done. So that was that was the the the, um, the biggest part of the learning curve was finding out decision making is not quite as simple as you might have thought it was, and you've got to give and take. Compromise is very much part of politics. Uh, so it 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 was uh, I, I would say a very positive experience. Yeah, um, you. You were also, did you not have private business at that time too? Was your wife running a... No, well, she was a nurse. She was a nurse. Okay. Um, I had a, at, at one point, I had a, had a beef operation going okay. at the same time. Right. Um, and also later on, when, when the public decided they had enough of me in provincial, <laughs> uh, 
um, I started up a logging operation and, and ran that for about 10 years as well. Yeah. Um, so you've got your hand, you've, you've got the experience in, in mm -hmm. both things. You've had, you've had um, provincial politics, you've had private sector experience, basically you ran your own business. Yeah. Um, did you uh, did you enjoy one more than the other? Was there one that made you well, think? <laughs> uh, it was also municipal for a while after provincial, which is kind of. Uh, you really do enjoy serving, don't you? Well, it was. Uh, I wanted to learn. Yeah. What, in that case, what it was like. Uh, As a I, municipal, you mean? Well, I wanted, you just to, try, wanted to know what it was I like. I wanted to try what it was like and see if I could make a contribution. It. I found it far more difficult, more restricted, a lot more personalities involved, believe it or not, and so on. Uh, and they do great, great stuff, but yeah. it's a different kind of uh, decision-making. Decision and the federal um, came along much like the provincial did originally. There were some things going on, and by then people said, well, you know, you're used to that. You yeah. Know, so on, so on. Well, you consider it. And actually my wife said, well, you know, you're gone at a lot of events and so on. Uh, maybe, it, maybe it is something you could try. Sure. Didn't assume I was going to win at that point or anything else, but uh, thought we'd give it a crack, and eventually it worked out. So. Yeah. Um, the, the issue of being defeated can be really tough for, mm -hmm. a, for a candidate as yeah. well. Did it make a particular impact on you, or did you just view it as a, an educational opportunity, really? Well, the first time in federal, mm -hmm. uh, we reduced the, the uh, majority that the member had a lot, and it didn't feel like a loss because it was a very close call. When I lost in 93, um, I think there were two things going on. There was a, a, a massive Tory loss taking place nationally at the yeah. same time. So you seemed to know that something was going to happen. And we'd been in government for quite a while by then, and governments do after a while age. Yeah. So I was certainly ready that it was going to happen, but it was quite an adjustment to go from uh, you know full speed ahead to, to change. What I did learn that time then probably – First time in my life I learned is that uh, stress and tension are real things. Because mm. about six months after the loss, they said, "Wow, you look younger and happier and healthier." Interesting, yeah. So it was probably uh, a good thing for me that it that it did happen in that way. But no, and I totally respect the fact the public's going to make the decision. If I like it or not, it's always going to be the right decision. And uh, so I'd, I'd had some warning. I know some find it a lot more difficult than others, but. Uh, no, I had a really good run, so I, I had no, no complaints. Why run again then? I mean, eventually you were successful, yeah. so I can, I mean, it, it's a happy ending uh, yeah. or a happy midpoint, yeah. but why run again if, if you um, <coughs> had, had already served uh, mm. so much in politics and could be in, the, could be in making money in, the, uh, mm -hmm. in your own business? Why run again? Well, and I take the chance <coughs> that you could lose. I, I know, and it's it's um, that's where people wonder sometimes why why do you take the risk, mm -hmm. um, particularly when you're going to get such accolades when you get in politics. Right? Sure. Everyone just loves to see you. Everyone is yeah. delighted to uh, yeah. see it. So I guess that one thing I knew that 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 was the environment you'd be in. So it didn't didn't bother me. Like there are a lot of people that whoa, I, that would really throw me off. But I think it's because a lot of people uh, again. Uh, some, some very different people are saying, look, uh, um, you've had the experience, you know how to do it, you know how to handle things, and uh, would you consider it? So there were people who were pushing, and I wasn't really interested at first. I thought, life's good, you know. But I, I think it got down to that same thing that's always been there, if you, think you, if you think you can make a difference. If there's fire in the belly, if you really say, hey, you know, this is worth trying, um, I wasn't quite as uh, naive as I was the first time out, but I felt okay. We can come up and, if if elected, can make yeah. can make a difference or try to make a difference. Sure. Yeah. And it worked out. Worked out pretty well. Um, more recently, uh, you've suffered a stroke. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked earlier also about this, the factor of stress and yeah. uh, the impact that it can have, just not just on your appearance, but on your general health. And yeah. when you suffered your stroke, did people tell you that it was time to slow down, or was it just? Uh, was it just a um, controllable situation once I was happened? very lucky. It was a stroke. I still have some vision uh, difficulties. I have, it's a hard way to lose weight. I've started losing ah. weight. But uh, because I was fortunate, as the, the cardiologist was great. They had a great team, really great team. We were, we were down south, and they said, you're fortunate to end up under a Dutch system. There are some that you don't want to be under. 
and they caught it, and it was a little clot, and so yeah. on and so forth. So I get back, and my wife's concerned, the nurse, and my of younger course. daughter, the nurse, um, you know, what, what's going to happen? And the cardiologist was super, and he said, look, uh, your heart is really good. In other words, it was a stroke, and it's yeah. electrical, not, uh, not blood flow. But you've got a number of things. You're going to be on medication first time in your life, so you accept that. You're going to exercise, you know, get into condition and so on. The funny comment he made to kind of relieve her is that he said, your heart could go on a marathon, but you may want a new body. <laughs> so <laughs> little hint there that, uh, you know, uh, things could work out, but it's up to you to, to do it. So right. um, we thought a lot. Uh, I was off until middle of April as far as the house um, did, did not, started doing a number of things down the riding just because I got tired of yeah. busy and so on. But it worked out as, I say, it's, it was a great warning. I mean, I'm not underestimating these things are serious, but um, you see so many people suffer from so many things. So I'm very fortunate. I'm very happy, and I'm probably going to be in better shape next year than I've been in a long time. So, Which is fun. Which is not a bad thing. Yeah. Not a bad thing. Um, what has been the difference for you um, in terms of the work you did on a provincial level and the work you're doing here in Ottawa? Is there a difference between being in uh, provincial politics and federal politics? I, I think there is. One of the things I've noticed getting back, I, I think politics in general is probably not quite as friendly as it was in the 80s. Uh, generally speaking, I think it's... How do you mean? Like it's... Well, I, I remember uh, uh, before I was finance, I was environment minister. And that's, matter of fact, that's where I met Elizabeth May. She was uh, oh, yes. bound determined to correct us down there in Nova Scotia at the same time. But I, I just remember that you could have um, an active debate in, in, in the House, in the Assembly, and could literally go out with one of the opposition members because they had an issue they wanted to talk about. You could have supper, sit down and talk and that. I, I, I don't find that's the case. And I mean that at provincial as well yes. as federal levels yes. as it was 20, 25 years ago. Why do you think it's happened? Well, there are, there are a couple of things. I, would, I never blame the media for anything, and yeah. I mean that sincerely. But I think... It, with the social media and the speed, I think uh, people feel uh, pushed a lot harder to come up with an instant answer. Uh, uh, perhaps the interest level isn't there. You tell me how many seconds people spend uh, following politics anyway. And a lot of people have ideas on how things can be fixed, which probably are not based on what can actually take place. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can get very frustrated, uh, I think, probably. And I, I do notice that, that there's a, there can be a frustration level at, at, with all parties, that's not a not, not specific to one. And I think we've got to take a step back every once in a while and remind ourselves, hey, the best part of my job is is I represent people from the riding. They're they're my boss. They elected mm. me and so on. And that hasn't changed so much. Even though it can get a little cranky once in a while, I think the the fact is, as long as you keep in touch, you're down on the war for your you know the community, whatever it might be. Um, in that sense, I don't, I don't think it's changed. The, the thing about federal that uh, uh, one has to remind yourself that one day you'll be talking about an issue in Ontario or an issue in BC or Nova Scotia or up north or whatever it may be. And our Constitution, uh, which a lot of leaders have, have, have looked at over the years, we, people talk about health, they talk about education and so on. We have one of the kind of the most interesting setups, both good and bad in some ways, and that is that we have a very wealthy country, but we have all these different delivery systems. You know, and people will refer to why not do like Sweden or whatever. And the fact is that uh, you have to go to the provinces to get, you know, get cooperation, get decision making. So there's that kind of a, a relationship that that pretty uh, that can cause a lot of a lot of strain as well. But it also provides a terrifically dynamic country. You know, there's all kinds of very interesting things and even the Americans are starting to notice that hey we're not a bad place up here that we actually do some things right so I think as long as you don't get bogged down on you know too many single issues or too much uh, um, distraction that uh, that it's, it's a pretty good job what's the most fun experience you've had so far in the house or as an MP most fun experience wow going home on a Thursday night <laughs> 
I, you, you meet a lot of interesting people. Uh, I, I don't know if there's one single one. Have I, you had a crazy character that you've... Uh, oh, we always get... Oh, yeah. We had all kinds of crazy characters that... Uh, some in the house, some outside, but... Yeah. No, I, I, I think there are a lot of good experience. I did one recently that... Um, related to the Titanic as an example, where we plaqued, um, provided a plaque, uh, this is on behalf of Peter Kent, uh, Minister of Environment, recognizing the people of Halifax. Everybody knows the story of the Titanic, but the people 100 years ago did a lot to try to help the families, the, no survivors, but look after the bodies. And, and it was one of those things that uh, kind of disappeared, but you could see the real interest and, and dedication even today from relatives from that time, who had relatives in that time, and it's those kinds of things, I think, recognizing community groups, recognizing um, that, uh, well, volunteerism is so mm. important and so on. It's a lot of those little things, I think, that make you feel good at the end of the day. Yeah. It's not so much, uh, you know, like a legacy thing or a great thing as, as knowing you're somehow contributing. For me, much more so in the community sense, much more so in the writing. Um, and certainly as a backbencher, you don't participate necessarily in all, you know, as much nationally as others, and that's as it should be, by the way, but you do get a chance to participate a lot, so I enjoy it. If you had an option to do something afterwards, not saying that, you know, you're thinking beyond politics, but is there something that you haven't yet had a chance to do in life that's on your bucket oh, list? Oh, my. <laughs> that's a big bucket. Uh, you mean when I grow up? When, when you grow up. What am I going to do? That's right. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of chance to, uh, and, and some of my colleagues have noticed this, that I'm not as enthused about traveling. Um, That's a tough job to be in. Well, I, I got a chance to travel a lot when I was provincial. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed it, and, and again, met a lot of people. That's, there's still some areas that I'd love to visit, uh, like our Scottish ancestors and so on and so forth, uh, just from a very personal perspective, not, not to try to accomplish. I don't, I don't see myself... Um, uh, looking for another career. I mean, I'm probably old enough I'll be able to retire some some <laughs> next decade or so. But I don't see being non-active. I, I really don't. And uh, part of that, again, would probably get involved in security stuff and, and maybe maybe some provincial things. I don't mean provincial political, but provincial uh, organizations and so on. Yeah. Haven't thought that far ahead yet. Though. That's probably wise in the end, isn't it? Oh, don't yeah. Don't jump ahead too much. Well, and the thing about that, Catherine, I think is that... Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a fact of life you look back that what you thought was going to happen next year may not even be the same the next day. Yeah. I mean, you start off your day and staff will tell you, well, we're, here's where we thought we were, but this has changed or this issue's come up or this group wants to meet or whatever. And you have to have that flexibility that says, oh, I'm not going to simply follow the uh, agenda. I've yeah. got to be reasonable in what I do. So you keep learning. I mean, it's doesn't get boring, that's for sure. I'm so glad that you took the chance to be here today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much.